MPs have backed a campaign group's calls to make lying a criminal offence for politicians. Compassion in politics is the group. And they said there's got to be urgent change to prevent holders of public office deliberately misleading the public. Their bill is actually backed by some politicians from parties like the, the Greens, their MP Caroline Lucas, who yesterday warned of a dishonesty epidemic. And the whole idea is to, to make sure that false public statements, including those made on social media or in election material, get properly punished. You get an unlimited fine and you wouldn't be able to stand for election for up to 10 years. What do you think, Rosie? Um, I think it's very sad that this is something that's being spoken about that we need. But at the same time, it is happening and there needs to be accountability for it. Can't just get away with it. Mm. It's a little bit like... Maybe backlash is the wrong word from Boris, but he obviously lied and there needs to be more done about that, I think. If you're lying at that level, I don't know, because to be... then we then we go to Tony Blair and the Iraq war, for example, mm. and, and we went on, on into war in Iraq, which is so serious, on the basis that there were weapons of mass destruction, but there weren't. But do we know whether Blair knew there weren't? Well, I think Did he think there were? And I think there, I mean, you know, let's be honest, that dossier probably was about as fictional as a Jackie Collins mm. now when we look back yeah. on it. But you're quite right. You've exposed, I think, there the problem, not necessarily with trying to hold politicians to account for lying. I think that's a very worthy, uh, 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 worthy ambition. But how would you implement it? Mm. How would you police that? You'd have a situation where the politician in question would say, oh, well, the advisor told me something that wasn't true. I gave the information in good faith. What I would prefer would be to have politicians who actually didn't want to be dishonest. Also, what what would we consider to be a lie? For instance, I think that the manifesto, perhaps there's an argument to say that that should be much more um, stringently policed, if you like, but then things change. You know, if, if if you had a manifesto commitment to spend X on the NHS and then the economy tanked and you'd have to say, sorry, we can't do that anymore, well, then would that be considered a lie? Would you then prosecute well, those actually, people? You raise a very good point and we should look, maybe maybe we should try and define this better. Just come, come with me if you can. And we thought, as we thought about this, we thought we've got to have three different categories here, right? So category one is the straight up lie. Category two are what you might call fibs. Come to that. Category three, just normal politics. OK, so let's start with lies. And I'll try. Here's an example. But I want to say one thing to the American people. I want you to listen to me. I'm going to say this again. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. That's not true. That's a whopper. He did. And same with Profumo in the 60s didn't have sex with Christine Keeler. Oh, yes, he did. And he resigned from politics. Those were lies. No question about it. This guy was a, an interesting example. This is the so-called comical Ali. He was the, the press spokesman for Saddam Hussein. His job was to say, we are not losing the war when the Americans went into Iraq for the Gulf War. And he kept say, saying it even when they were on the brink of defeat. We will slaughter them all. Those invaders, their tombs will be here in Iraq. You're not frightened now, sir? Not at all. Not at all. And you don't be frightened. We are going to tackle them and to destroy them. They are not near Baghdad. Don't believe them. It's messes. They are liars. That's all. What's the situation today here in Baghdad? It's good, as you see it. As he looks round, you actually see American tanks behind him. So that was a lie, but maybe you'd forgive him. He, he, was, he was being told to do it by the boss. So let's have a look at, at the other categories here. So I mentioned lies. Now, fibs. This is more difficult. Where there might be an innocent explanation, however improbable. That's the fib. And we might say, Boris Johnson saying there were no parties, maybe, as he said, you know, OK, you're laughing, but maybe, and he was at parties, maybe he was told there weren't parties by somebody and he believed them. Could that be a, a fib, not a lie? Is that possible? And if we're on this category of, of uh, non lie or something that is a, this could be a fib, isn't it? This is Labour saying, Rishi Sunak doesn't think adults convicted of sexually assaulting children should go to prison. They got into a lot of trouble. Rishi Sunak doesn't think that. So uh, this looks like a fib, doesn't it? Because surely he does think that. And they sort of know he does. Then we get to just normal politics. Here's the classic. This is a pledge by the Liberal Democrats. They're not going to vote to increase tuition fees. 
They get into power and they do vote for it. And someone says, I should have stayed in bed instead of voting for Nick Clegg. It's a classic of its kind. Was it a lie or just normal politics? And one more for you. At the party conference, he, the Prime Minister, kept saying, I have not made a decision on HS2 yet. He announced the decision, blow me down. He'd made a film about his decision five days earlier. And we know that because it was filmed in Downing Street. So, just normal politics, Rosie? What about that? The Rishi Sunak, was it a lie? Was it a fib? Or is it just normal politics? I'm kind of leaning towards just politics. So you wouldn't, in the end, not punish any of it? Well, ugh, so hard. I think it's different when it's a, a blatant lie. I mean, that, that is a, a lie, but that's just such a sticky topic. What do you I think? think, Christo? Because I, I think Rishi Sunak, I, I mean, we had a discussion in the office and everyone said, oh, that's just, just the way it goes. Mm. I think that was a whopper, saying I haven't made a decision when he has. Well, yes, but then what would he say? I've made my decision, but I'll release it in a few days because I'm filming the yeah. VT about it. Or maybe you know, he says he filmed two VTs. There are lots of, yes, or, <laughs> yeah, well, two, or two articles about whether you're pro or anti-Brexit, which we also had. So I think there's, you know, even in journalism, we know that sometimes there is... Um, a, a, a story that is what we call here embargoed, which means that we can't release it till, say, midnight, but we know it's coming. Yeah. Well, would that be considered a lie? Well, because I, no, I think that does, that's why I put, put the Sunak thing, although I'm being a bit harsh on him, under the just normal politics, because mm. you can't start prosecuting that kind of news management. But, but you could say Clinton, Profumo, uh, I mean, Comical Alley, they were whoppers. No, but then Comical Ali, I think you raise a very good point there as well when it comes to propaganda. Because look at what we had to do during the Second World War, for instance. There were times where it was in a very, very dire situation for the UK. But the, but the, 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 the media and politicians were honest saying, well, look, you know, we're probably done for. Because sometimes you have to say to the nation, for the, the good of the nation, actually, no, oh, things That's are going to be fine. And, 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 and more recently, the financial crisis, we now know from the then Chancellor Alistair Darling that, that we were within hours of the cash points not working when the banks were creaking. The government couldn't say that. And inarguably, with Northern Rock, they, they could have had an excuse for lying to say there's nothing wrong with that bank. Because people started saying there was, and there was a run on it. Uh, absolutely. Mm. So and then, it's, it's, yeah, OK, this is... There's a line. Let's yeah. take... There's a line. Lies, fibs, just normal politics. Do we prosecute the liars? Jack in Cheshire, what do you think? Um, ten years inside for major lies. Five years inside for fibs. And the minor lies, maybe two and a half years inside. Inside. So, right, so Sunak inside. for that thing of saying I've not, not made not a decision. Not sentence, inside, inside prison. OK. These You're... people need removed from society. They're supposed to be... One of the things about being a, a politician or a counsellor, you are a social leader. You need to be setting a good example to the rest of society, we... and particularly <laughs> the younger people. Well, you're, Jack, you're, you're harsh, aren't you? Because what we'd end up, it'd be like VAR. I'm harsh and harsh and old-fashioned. Yeah, I, I hear you. And then that may be, Rosie, what a lot of people think. You just simply send the police in and say, yeah. right, who said this and why did you say it? It's, it's tricky because if the leaders were the one policing it, they're also the ones that lie as well, so then they can't be... Well, you're the police to be separate, I guess. I mean, the classic yeah. being, you know, where were the police... Uh, when the Downing Street parties were going on, answer, they were in Downing Street as well. Yeah. And also, the police have, at times, not been completely honest. Well, as well, in some mm. of their... There's that as well. We got